Welcome to a, another episode of I Am AAPC. I am Alex McKinley, or AAPC Alex, as many of you may know from AAPC social media channels. And I work at the AAPC National Office. Today, I have Lisa Newen with me. Lisa, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Alex? I'm great, thank you. So I put out a call for members to share their stories, and here you are. You responded to that call, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, and we're excited to hear your, hear your story. So Lisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? So um, I actually got into the health industry uh, back in 99, right after high school. So um, I actually was able to um, start with the UC system and I actually um, started as a medical record assistant um, and then moved my way up, did front office. Uh, that was a few years. And then um, as I was doing front office, I actually got the opportunity to do charge capture um, where I touched billing. Um, I did um, the review of CPT codes, ICD-9 at the time, all on paper, you know, looking through documentation via paper and then putting that in within the system. Okay, and so then, you said you said UC system is that I, I'm guessing University of California. That's correct. Yes, okay. so I'm from Tustin, California. Okay, all right. And um, were you? Did you? You did not have any ambitions right away to be a coder. It wasn't like you went into healthcare saying I want to be a medical coder. Correct. Correct. Okay. I actually got the passion as I was working through the healthcare system. Okay, all right. So you were a transcriptionist for a while. Uh, continue with your story, Lisa. Yes, and then um, I actually enjoyed the charge capture piece. Um, I then went into revenue integrity. Um, at the time we were called revenue audit um, and I did charge capture uh, for a few years, uh, both inpatient, outpatient, uh, ED, um, and then touched uh, CPT codes then. Um, and then got the opportunity to be a supervisor. And um, during that time, um, I liked coding. So I decided to, um, I heard about AAPC, um, took my, um, did the three day boot camp that uh, was offered and uh, got my CPC back in 2011. So you had all of this great experience before you, you picked the coding path. Yes. Yes, did I that did. make it easier for you to um, to dive into coding and and when you took that three day boot camp was it easier? You had comprehension of of the system a little bit. Yes, I was able to link it to things that I knew, so that was nice. Um, because coding is, is it's beast of its own. <laughs> and um, it's not for everyone, but it's um, the exam itself is tough. I'm not a good test taker. I can say that um, and admit to it. Um, but as far as uh, taking that CP exam, the CPC exam, I actually wouldn't do um, that again. So I will continue <laughs> my um, CEUs to get that keep going. And yep. it's been almost 10 years. Oh, wow. Wow. So you've been an APC member for 10 years. Yes. Okay, awesome. Well, let's, let's step back a, a little bit, even um, uh, as uh, before your coder before as you're just getting into healthcare. What um, what drew you to healthcare? Uh, what drew me to healthcare? I accident. It was a, sometimes it really. Can be, it or... was more of um, stability um, okay. at the time. Um, I was a young mom, so um, I definitely needed insurance for my child, making sure I'm stable. And healthcare is definitely stability uh, when it comes to insurance and just. Um, things like that. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, tell us about your experience with the exam. So many of our students uh, prepare uh, by taking medical terminology and anatomy, all of these things. Um, but you just took this, you just jumped right in, took a three-day boot camp, um, was, it, and it was enough because you passed and here you are. <laughs> um, but it did, it did all of that healthcare experience you had um, previously uh, um, give you the anatomy and some of these found other foundations um, to yes. help you prepare? So I actually did have some anatomy courses uh, in high school. And then I had the opportunity to, um, to just have the experience of um, the coding and the descriptions that in, is entailed within coding. Um, 
like I said, I'm not a good test taker, but as far as the experience goes, it actually helped me with my exam. Um, I was very um, specializing in ambulatory, so I was good with the coding within multi-specialties, um, but when it came to ancillary services and radiology and labs, that's where I, I know um, I could have used more work there. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, I hear, um, I've heard many people say, I'm not a good test taker, which makes our exam especially challenging. Um, what, in your mind, makes the APC CPC exam so challenging? Um, I think it's the volume of questions we have. There's like 150 um, and it's the time you have. So five hours and 40 minutes. Um, it's just remembering and thinking about that during the test taking. And then um, and then you have to you're looking through the book. And so as you're reviewing the book for the proper coding, um, it takes a bit of time. Um, it's one time management um, to um, just ensuring that you know um, if you have your first guess go with it um, don't second or third guess yourself because a lot of times your first one was right um, and so I think with me I overthink things and so sometimes um, my second or third answer gets changed and so it may it, it got wrong <laughs> in yeah, some yeah. cases. Uh, but you stuck you stuck with it. Um, you, you passed the exam. And what what advice would you give to um, AAPC future examinees in preparing for the exam? I would say definitely give yourself the time to read through everything um, and then making sure you focus on the areas that you feel you need a little bit more help with. Um, because most of the time, what you're familiar with is going to be what you um, you're going to be good at. So you want to focus on the areas that you may need a little bit more help with. Um, I also would suggest to uh, time yourself. Um, time management is huge. I know a lot of people I hear um, have um, didn't th that five hours and 40 minutes wasn't enough. And so just timing yourself and making sure you you're within that window. Yes, yes. And we, ha we have practice exams to give um, our students that opportunity. So I, I highly encourage those students to this uh, go for it with those practice exams to give you an idea of where you stand with everything. Yes. And that might be helpful. All right. So uh, um, Lisa, I am so enamored with your background and how much um, uh, experience you had before coding. Because you know there's so many individuals who are just trying to break down that door to get into a healthcare position, but you had that opportunity. Um, what, um, um, what, tell me a little bit more about um, what you do now. So I actually work in compliance. Um, I found my passion within compliance. Um, I'm an auditor trainer. Um, and what we do is um, we um, look at current coding and validate that documentation supports uh, the guidance and what was built out. Um, and so we, we work closely with Neridian because um, that's our Mac, um, just to ensure that um, everything's proper, any guidance changes, we understand it properly because not all guidance is black and white within this uh, world. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, um, there, there may be students who are watching this who um, don't see how compliance fits into that. What happens when your facility is not compliant, Lisa? So we actually can get fined um, and we actually can get audited as well. So auditing processing uh, through our um, MAC, um, so our Medicare um, contractors. Okay. We actually can um, get fined, like I shared, it's a lot of money, um, and then we can also lose licensing. So um, just ensuring everything's compliant is the way to go. Okay, okay, so you, you are making sure everybody's doing what they should be doing, following the rules, making sure everything's clean and, and operating as it should. Right. <laughs> and training others to do that. As much now. as we can, and then finding as... more opportunities. Wow, wow. And uh, how, how did you find your niche in compliance? Because there's so many different paths that you can take. And we, we see that. And as I've been interviewing our members, I'm seeing, um, you know, many start out as quarters, but they become auditors or risk adjustment, or there's so many different paths. And here you are at compliance. What 
what was that evolution for you like, Lisa? So for me, um, like I started with not knowing what I'm going to, I, I, what my passion was within the healthcare industry. Um, I had, I looked for it everywhere. I went from front office. That wasn't my cup of tea, medical records, as I shared, um, I did charge capture. I wasn't go, data entry wasn't my thing. So then I realized, um, from all of that, becoming a supervisor, um, and, um, just looking at everything at a glance and what I've touched, um, I feel compliance from my perspective was my passion. Um, I wanted everything done properly. Um, I like to educate and train um, and coding CPC actually helped me get this, uh, this role um, in what I do now um, because we have to code. We, we look at documentation, we make sure proper coding is, um, is happening. And so um, that's, I would say that um, you just have to find your niche and you have to look for it. Um, it's not just going to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess when you work in a facility like yours, you, um, you get to see different aspects and become friends with people in these different departments doing different things. So that's right. probably helpful. Um, uh, Lisa, do you have ambitions or I don't know, well, let me ask you this first. What other certifications do you have, if, if any? So I do. Um, actually, I got the CPMA um, in 2018. And then I also got the CPCO um, in 2019. Um, and not with uh, APC, I also have my um, CHCBS, which is um, for FQHC and rural health. Okay. And uh, did you get those certifications um, looking for new opportunities or did new, new, the new opportunities come and you thought these certifications can help me in this role? So for compliance, when I, when I, I've done compliance for about four years now, and um, I actually um, felt I, I, for opportunity purposes, I um, got the CPCO. So that's your compliance officer one. Okay. Um, and then your CPMA for medical auditing. So um, I felt it was going to be um, a good opportunity for me to get that now, and then being able to um, expand my horizons with um, my journey. <laughs> okay. Now, I know for many coders, they they can't help but just peek and think, maybe I want to try this one down the road. Do you have that itch at all, Lisa? I do. I really want to do the COC. Um, I actually ha had the opportunity to do the free AAPC um, uh, a promotion last summer. Had. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, awesome. But I didn't have, I didn't ha I have yet to take the exam. So. <laughs> All right. All right. It's waiting for you and you love those exams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> uh, Lisa, had, had you ever um, spent time after receiving your CPC, um, doing production coding or, um, you know, just what you would think is a uh, entry level coding type of position? So um, I personally haven't been a coder myself. Um, I actually use these um, certifications for growing um, in what I do. So um, as a supervisor, I had to educate uh, back office staff, sometimes providers. Um, and so I wanted to get um, my own um, knowledge of the coding world because I wanted to make sure we were doing things properly. Um, and so I also reached out to the, our coding team. Those were my experts at the time. I said, well, this is how I would code it. What do you think? And so I did take the opportunity to use what I knew um, to enhance what I did. Okay, okay. And as a supervisor, um, do you have a hand in hiring coders? Um, I didn't as coders, but I did um, as charge capture or data entry level at the time. Okay. And um, for those, you know, you, you, after you pass the, that hurdle of the uh, exam, um, some individuals have that hurdle of getting into healthcare and finding that first job. Um, what would you say to someone um, who is trying to break in and, and find that first position? I would say whatever you can get your hands on or your step in to the healthcare industry, do it. 
whether it be a, um, you know, the stepping stone of a medical records assistance like I was, um, it would give you the opportunity to network, be that person that networks, um, use that opportunity when you get that step in. And, um, and then you'll find your passion. And that's what I, I had the opportunity to do. Awesome. And now you live your passion and and I do. <laughs> a coder, like uh, individuals in this um, industry just soak up information and are always seeking to learn and improve. Are you that? Right. Yes, I am. Yes. And yes. I'm always, you know, since the pandemic, uh, we've learned so much and um, we continue to learn every day because things are changing and evolving. Okay. How has the pandemic affected you and your facility? Um, we actually had, um, so I currently work in a, a different facility. So I uh, went from one UC to another um, and we've had a lot of changes. We had to change up our structurally because we had, um, we had to make more room for uh, COVID patients. Um, and so we also had to learn additional guidance um, because things were changing there. Um, it, it was, you know, everything was happening so quickly. Um, so we had to put in uh, quick tip sheets together for our physicians, our back office staff uh, to do everything properly and continuing to listen to um, different guidance um, and phone calls just to ensure we understand everything properly to be able to educate out. You're listening to CMS off, uh, like all the time, right? Just yes. looking for <laughs> what has changed, what's been updated. Right. And you're, it sounds like a big part of your role is to communicate all of these changes as they come. And sometimes they come fast and furious and sometimes yes. they sneak in, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and sometimes you hear it from, you know, the providers. Oh, I heard this from my association. And so wow. um, how does this impact me? So a lot of times um, we just got to, uh, you know, learn ourselves every day we're learning. So it's a great thing. All right. All right. And now um, just talking about networking, you talked about networking um, for those seeking um, you know, future employment and um I wonder if, have you been active or have you been involved with your AAPC local chapter in any way? Um, I personally have not. Um, I know I see their emails, um, but I've been more um, involved with um, just the AAPC webinars that I have, that you guys okay. ha offer. Um, and so um, just learning myself, but I haven't had the opportunity to go to chapter meetings and okay. um, stuff like that. Well, Lisa, you know that, um, what, what's your chapter? Where, is it, where are they Orange located? chapter. Orange chapter. The, the mm -hmm. president of the Orange chapter and those officers are watching this and they're going to call you and they're going to nominate <laughs> you to be the vice president. So look out. <laughs> I'll wait for the call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, um, Lisa, um, what, um, what, as we conclude, would you share with those seeking or maybe even con just considering a career in healthcare in the business side of healthcare? Um, try it. You, it, it doesn't hurt. What's the, what's the harm? You don't like it and then you move on. Um, but you'll never know unless you try it. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's great. Great. Um, what a great story of, I mean, you have um, had some amazing opportunities and sure. um, I think a lot of individuals, they dream of that, um, of just falling. I mean, I, I know you've worked hard and, um, and, but you didn't, when you stepped into healthcare, you didn't know what path it was going to lead you. And Not here you are 10 years later. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's been, so in all honesty, it's been about 15 years with, um, with everything, Total. but okay. um, 20, almost 22 years with the healthcare industry. Wow. So you started when you're 12. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Beautiful. No. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for um, sharing your story with us and um, the AAPC members and future AAPC members. I like to conclude by having uh, having my guest just say in their own special way, I am AAPC. So would you do that, Lisa? I am AAPC. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And Lisa, thanks for your time. You have a great day and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.